church has been mentioned on many occasions in the synoptic gospels, in the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Jesus makes utterances about 
the church, which is called the mystical body of Christ. It's, it's not really literal. You can't get into the church really by joining, and you really don't get into the church by attending uh, a place of worship. It's mystical, it's spiritual. And even Jesus said to Nicodemus in John chapter number three, you must be born, born of the spirit and then born of the water. And so there is an introduction. Israel becomes a typology in the Old Testament of the church in the later day. They are chosen, chosen out. So God protects them, he provides for them, he shelters them. Israel becomes a typology of, of God looking on a special people. We also call that the ecclesia of the ecclesia which are the called out ones for Jesus Christ. Jesus then said, in the synoptic gospels, I will build my church. So that there is a misnomer. The church don't belong to the bishop. It don't belong to deacons. It don't, it don't belong to the trustees or the brothers and sisters. The church is owned by Jesus himself. And so if there are any bragging rights of your mom or your dad or your relatives, your poor to you, they don't matter because Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. And when my sin left the crimson stain, he wiped it, wiped, wiped as white as snow. So the church is not only, you might have the keys to open the door. You may have finance responsibilities, singing responsibilities, playing, cleaning, teaching responsibilities. But really, only Jesus gets the glory. And the sooner we understand that, then our attitude may be altered in when we come into a place of worship, that you're not giving that homage or that honor to Bishop Carter. I don't deserve the praise. I really don't. As a matter of fact, no one in here deserves the praise, but Jesus. I'm, I'm confused and I'm staggered because after all he's been with us and to us and for us, not since January, but just this week alone, toys and snares and dangers we've come, and he kept you another week. This week alone in the world, 350,000 folk did not see another week. 350,000 folk lost their life this week in the world. And God saw fit to wake you up this morning not because you deserved it, but he saw fit. Ah, yes, Lord. That's why we can say, great is his faithfulness. It ain't about your degree, it ain't about your attire. It's not about how good I am and how much I praise. It's because of his faithfulness toward us that we're standing here today. Lord, in our right mind, I wish somebody would feel me right now. I 
I've been and had the opportunity to visit a mental institution recently, and they're a folk in perfect health, but have lost their mind. But God gave you a mind to come to church. how good we are and how iconoclastic we are. We have come because great is his faithfulness toward us. Great is his faithfulness toward us. Amen. I'm giving you an opportunity to pound the book of James, all right? James chapter number one, and we'll commence at the first verse, and we'll, we'll, we'll read a little bit. Uh, possibly uh, down to the eighth verse. Probably not the best place to cut, but for the sake of time, we'll read verses one through eight. And if you have that on your local unit or in your physical Bible, let's read together. Verse number one. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work that he may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. Let's say that again. Come on. But let him ask in Nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in the law. That means throughout his life. A man that wavers is unstable. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. What a reading from James, the brother of Jesus. And I would like to use a companion text on today, Psalm number 37 down in the Old Testament, and because of the sake of time, uh, we won't uh, read uh, it all, and we'll just read the Italic verse 37 and 37. It is a scripture of memory, uh, action. It really is a scripture of memory that should be committed to those who live and follow Jesus. Psalm number 37 says, Mock the perfect man, and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. Um, for exhortation, encouragement to the fathers, but also to the household of faith, to all of the household of faith, the price of a stable man, or the cost of a stable man. And to make it more generic, sort of a subtopic, just look at your neighbor and say, you don't look like what you've been through. Look at somebody and say, you really don't look like what you have been. You've been through. I, 
I find it quite uh, interesting, uh, particularly when I look at the Book of James, and it can almost be connected to Matthew, Mark, Luke. It is not necessarily historic in its presentation. Matthew's Mark, Luke, and John, or, and John, yes. It's sort of historic in its presentation. It's really talking about the life of Jesus, the topography, um, the death, burial, the resurrection, the experiences of Jesus, um, and countering uh, the enemy at every, at every angle. And James is unequivocally one of the most instrumental books in the Bible um, because he is now addressing um, those who have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. He's really talking uh, to those uh, in Jerusalem and trying to steady them because after the day of Pentecost, um, the church suffered great persecution. Um, when we understand the book of James and also the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and we call them synoptic because they tell the same story but from a different perspective. That's synoptic. That's the word synoptic. It means there were eyewitnesses to the life of Jesus, but they saw it from a different perspective. Matthews as a tax collector, Mark as a fisherman, um, Luke as a physician. So Luke tells the story as a fisherman. Mark um, or Luke, I'm sorry, as a physician, as a doctor. He was uh, a doctor in that time. Mark tells as a fisherman. Matthew tells the life of Jesus from the perspective he was employed by the government. He was uh, a tax collector. Uh, we would call him probably today IRS agent working for the government. Each one of them give their thought and understanding of who Jesus was. I think it's interesting that the book of James, though, gives an entirely different perspective. I, I think it gives a per perspective different because James here is the brother of Jesus. Someone ought to say amen. Yeah. There is no one that knows you better than your mama, your daddy, and your siblings. You cannot fake the fog uh, with your siblings because the siblings, your brothers and sisters, they remember before you were saved. And they remember when you uh, weren't sanctified. They remember how you grew up and, and the experiences. And so, when I'm around uh, my siblings, I have a sister here who works in this ministry, uh, and a brother that's a deacon of the ministry, an older brother, doctor brother that's working for the CIA, the FBI. I don't know what he's doing, but they don't call me bishop. They don't call me doctor. They don't call me teacher. They call me Maurice because that is the context in which they know me. Uh, my, I saw was with my sister on um, uh, yesterday as we traveled out of town and she sat with uh, Deborah. And when I came home, she gave me a hug and amen. She said, brother, amen. That, that meant more to me than mission. It meant more to me than doctor. And I just call him a baby king. Hallelujah. Amen. Call him a baby king. Amen. Because I remember, and she remembers the past. James 
is so connected with Jesus. It's, it's, he, he goes beyond the historical perspective. He goes beyond where Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Uh, the, the pie, pie apology. He's not even talking uh, about that. He's not talking about the historians. He's not talking about the times. And he's really not even dealing with the various sects, S-E-C-T, of the uh, Jews, uh, Sadducees, Pharisees, uh, the scribes. He's not even talking from that perspective. He's talking from the perspective of really the power of his brother. Hallelujah. And in the beginning of James chapter uh, here, he, he, he gives him uh, the honor. He gives honor to God. And even though he could have said, uh, I'm giving honor to my brother, he, he says, uh, I honor the Lord Jesus Christ. And, that, and so to understand Jesus Christ is not really his first and last name. Um, in the uh, Old Testament and in the New Testament, rarely would Jews ever identify a person of great notice uh, by their last name. They would recognize a person by their uh, first name. And, and though they had a surname, which would have been a last name, they would never have done that. They would have said uh, uh, Maurice of uh, Clodale uh, or John of New York City. And so here, uh, James recognizes the, the Father, the God head. He, he irrevocably gives reverence to the God, the creator of all that we see and understand. But he also gives honor to his brother, literal brother, but also that he is Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord being one who has honor, one who has nobility. He comes out of the house of Jesse. He has roots from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. So, He's a noble man. He, he's just not a Jew from one of the tribes of Israel. But he has royal blood inside of him. And because he has royal blood inside of him, uh, he is given the distinction that he is a ruler. And they would have called his name or used the title as a ruler, Lord. His name is Jesus. And of course, the name Jesus is an amalgamation of what we know his name to be, Jesus. Uh, it would have been called Yahuda, uh, uh, Yeshua, if you please. And, and that name is related to um, one of the books of the Bible it goes back to the Old Testament called Joshua, that would not have been pronounced by Yiddish or Hebrew Joshua. It would have been Yahuda or Yahshua. And so Joshua or Yahuda in the Hebrew means uh, the God of our salvation. It can be connected and related to even the term Elijah. Oh my God is my salvation. And so here is James giving him rulership. He is the God. He is the Father. He is in control. And his name is Jesus. And the Bible tells us in Matthew's chapter number one, and you've heard it so many times, when he was born, uh, in Bethlehem, laid in a stable. The Bible tells us, beginning maybe at verse number 24, that thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Uh, that's a note right there. When you are in trouble, like I've been in trouble, uh, parts, pieces of my life, parcels of my life, 
and you don't know how to pray or what to pray for. You don't know how to form the words when you're in trouble, when you're in desperation. But when you say Jesus, you have said it all. Now, you might call him the man upstairs and the man with the master plan and Isaac, the father of Isaac, Jacob, and Abraham. But when I'm in trouble, I call his name Jesus. The Bible says that name is so powerful that every knee should bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. But I love it even greater than that, that when I call his name Jesus, the Bible says that even demons believe that name and they tremble at the name of Jesus. So I want to give the call of inspiration to somebody that's going through depression, somebody that's going through great trial and tested on oh my that when you call the name of the Lord, you call his name Jesus. The demons that have been fighting your mind. Do I have a witness? Uh, or am I the only one in a fight for my life? That when demons and desperatism and things that are negative when I don't know what to say and I don't have a gun to shoot them, I can call the name of Jesus. Oh my, because when we call the name of Jesus, we have said it all. I wish somebody would just say Jesus. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noon day. Jesus when the sun goes down. Because when you said Jesus, you said it all. He knows about your struggles. He knows about your depression. He knows about your economic scenario. He knows about what you're fighting against. And so when you call the name of Jesus, he comes in a quick and a hurry. Hallelujah. And so while I'm fighting with all of my life, I'm calling on the name of Jesus. For the Bible says, for the name of the Lord is a strong power, and the righteous one in and day. I'll say. <laughs> oh, dear God, I pray that you're not in here praising Maurice. You're not in here praising the man. You're not in here praising the music team. But we come to give God the praise. <laughs> we come to give him the honor. We come to give him the glory. And then Lord, because Lord represents uh, his headship, it represents uh, his authority, it represents his position as a, a king. Like King of Melchizedek, amen. Jesus is his name, and then Christ is uh, sort of uh, his ability, amen. And we would call uh, me Maurice Carter, yes, that's my surname. My surname is Carter, that's the last name on my father's side, Carter. Hallelujah. So I'm identified, I'm a Carter by the name of Maurice. Uh, yes, and Carter is an old English word for one that carts, a carter, and then a one who handles carts. Maurice being a dark-skinned man, so I'm a carter that is understood by his ethnicity. But when we understand the precious, uh, precious goal of Jesus, we call him Lord because he's ruler, we call him Jesus because there is power in the name and then we call his name Christ. That is not his last name but it is his ability to set free. It's what he does and the word Christ means the anointed one. Everybody said Christ means the anointed one. Christ is not his last name. Anointed one is what he does. He is the savior of the world. Yes. He has kingship, yes. He has a scepter and he has a crown. He comes out of a royal noblish. And yes, he can save people from their sin. 
but what we call him Lord Jesus Christ. Christ means the anointed one. Oh, come on, somebody. Touch your neighbor and say, you got the right one. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, not, 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 not Harry Krishna. Not, 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 not Muhammad. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Not Confucius or Martin Luther. We serve the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the anointed one, which means he's been exalted. He's been lifted up. Oh, my. The Bible says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And so Christ means he's the anointed one. Oh, yes, tell somebody he can break and destroy every yoke. Yes. And then, who is ever anointed that God had the power to break yokes? That God had the power and the authority to break depression? So when I say Jesus, that means who will save my soul. When I say Lord, he is the king of my life. He's the Lord of lords and the king of kings. But when I say Christ, he breaks every shame. I don't care if you are addicted. I don't care if you are depressed. I don't care if you are poor. I don't care how many demons are in your life. I serve a Christ that can break every chain, break every sin, break every struggle, break every depression, break.
to tell him to praise God. You can praise him when you feel it. You can praise him when you think about it. what he's done for you. I mean, open on somebody. Let me be in a church where I can dance and I can cry. I can lay on the floor. Let me be in the church where I can raise my hands. Well, I've got a fifth grade education or a PhD. I can let God have his way. And you are in the right place at the right time. But you can give God the praise.
not likely to be overturned. It is firmly fixed. All of us have a measure of faith. God gives you all a measure of faith. But your faith can be increased by the experiences of your life. And so James said, if you want to have a mentor, if you want to be able to go through your mind has got to be made up I want to talk to somebody right now oftentimes we are moved by what we see with our naked eye hello and so there are times when it does not look popular does not sound popular. You are not popular. You still do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. I remember, I remember teaching in a local school district, not a local, but a school district. I had a group school called them Jugheads, and they called them Jugheads because they were not reading proficient. They uh, had not and was not successful on in the, the state tax in, in Virginia in the 80s called the Minimum Competency Test. This is before SMLs. It's called the Minimum Competency Test. And you had to be proficient in English, uh, math, and I believe uh, history. And so there were three tests, and if you didn't pass all three, you were to be held and you could not graduate and that was in the early in the early eighties. So never liked the term junkhead. Um, that's what many of the teachers felt. And of course because of, they were junkheads, I was the junkhead teacher. And the school district did not expect them to pass. Come on, somebody. If you don't expect folk to be successful and to do better, then you're in trouble. They didn't expect them to pass. We're working with them. Glory to the name of God. Hallelujah. And folk were saying, just Keep them in your classroom, Luis. Don't let them get into the hall. Keep them from fighting one another, selling drugs, alcohol. Just keep them in your room. And I decided to see if these young people could at least read and pass the minimum competency and have a year to work with them. So we just read and read, read, read the comprehension, read for the meanings, pronunciation, understanding, sentence structure, etc. cetera, and goes and strategic. So, um, this group of students that I had for a block, a 90 minute block, ended up all of them passing the minimum competency test. Yeah. 
It wasn't because of them. It really was not because of them. It was because they believed they could. And so it's the level of expectation. Because when you believe you can, it opens up the doors to opportunity. If you don't believe you can be a better person, you're right. And if you do believe you can be a better person, you are absolutely right. And what I'm saying to you is, the only thing that's stopping you is your faith. Come on, somebody. Some of you are no different than me. Folks, through Google Dust, Black Magic, I grew up poor. Poor neighborhood, hallelujah. But my past, my history, was not my destiny. And I want to tell you, your history is not your destiny. You may have been poor. You may have been depressed. You may have been cursed. You may have been this or that. But when you come to Jesus, he makes you a new creature. And the Bible says, when he makes you a new creature, your past, he throws away. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet today. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can do me. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself. So you can use me. I give myself away. Mm -hmm. I give myself away. So you can use me. I give myself. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you. The cost of being 
stable are the test of your life. You're tested, you're tried to provide stability, not just for yourself, but for your family, for your community, your place of employment, your neighborhood. And I'm asking someone here today, will you give yourself to God? So that He can use you. So that He If you're here today, if, if you're here, hallelujah. I'm asking you, as we did last week, come to the altar and say, Lord, you know, last week was last week, but this week is this week. I need your help. I need your strength. One of the things that I found out that I don't need God just yesterday, I need it more today than I did yesterday. And though the Lord said it 40 plus years ago, I need it more today than I did 40 years ago. And I realized that guess what? I'm not good enough to save me. I'm not. I'm not so personal that I can't approach God and say, Lord, I need you. Every hour I need you. And I wish there were witnesses in the house who would say, my life or your life has not been a bed of roses. Your life hasn't been perfect like my life. Hallelujah. Made mistakes, fallen, been disappointed. But somehow God picked me up. So glad. Hallelujah. So glad. Hallelujah. I'm not here by my own volition. What I mean by own volition, I'm not here by my own intellectual capacity. And it's so easy to lean on your intellect, on your rationale. But the Lord said, you can't go to heaven on your rationalization. You got to go to heaven on your faith. Hallelujah. That's why it's so difficult and challenging for folk. Because they just can't see a God. Imagine a God that is so merciful. After all that they have done, after all of the mistakes, after all of the tests, hallelujah. I wish there was somebody that would agree with me. You know, we don't just have a day of mistakes. Sometimes we have months of mistakes. Sometimes 12 months. <laughs> and it goes, the old year goes into the new. And then the new year goes into the next year. And we carry stuff. Yeah. A witness in the house. Stuff you carry in 1927. You still wrestling with it. You're still fighting with it. The person who hurt you is dead and gone. And you're still struggling with that issue. The person who hurt you, they gone on. Oh. And you still got it in your mind, in your heart. Come on, Father. Hallelujah. I'm telling somebody right now, God is telling you, let it go, John. Let it go. Let it go so that God can bless you. Hallelujah. He can't bless you if you're holding on to the And those of you that are here today, hallelujah. And though we've said it time and 
again, time again, off the call, after, off the call. But it, it might be one person who might get it today. I just want you to lift your hands right now. And, and the reason why I want you to lift your hands is this. And we, we ask you to do this here in the crystal time and time again. You can't have your hands open and hold on to the past at the same time. So when your hands are open, and my hands are open, what I'm saying is, God, I'm giving it to you. The bill, I don't know how it's going to be paid, but I'm going to give it to you. I don't know how that child is going to be delivered, but I'm going to give it to you. I made a mess of it, but I'm giving it to you. Thank you so much. And with your hands up, what you're saying is this. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself. I give myself. My life is not my own. Or who you give it to you. 
Some of you are giving people to God. Some of you are giving things. Some of you are giving anxiety. Some of you are giving sin. Some of you are giving addictions. Hallelujah. There's somebody there grappling with anger. Just great anger and frustration. Lord, I'm giving you to birthed with disappointment. All your life has been the disappointment. People said they were disappointed. Lord, I'm giving you the disappointment. Do you all mind if Pastor join you? I'm looking out, but I want to become I want to become a part of you. And say, Lord, I give my life. Lord, I give my problems. I give my
everyone here that want to take on the name of Jesus through baptism. Baptism represents being your sins are heavy and they are buried your sins, your anguish into a liquid stream as a grave there is a body one's body is buried their sin in a liquid grave and that they come up in the newness of life. All things pass through them. The whole all things are coming. And the Bible says, if you repent, that means, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. I can't help myself. And then be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. He said, shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I want to repent. I want to be baptized. But Lord, I want the Holy Ghost. I want Jesus inside. If you're here today, you can come and just say, hey, Pastor, I, I'm ready. I'm not asking you to join the Christmas not my business, but I just need a fresh look. I need a better perspective of life. So today, I repent. I, I want to be baptized. And I want the Holy Ghost power and fire like the day of Lord. You can, you can come right now and say, today, I made a decision. Do right by God. He's always done right by me, but I need to right by God. If you hear me, come right now. Hallelujah. You may return to your seat at this time. God bless you. Beloved, just return to your seat. You may remain.
still
fates are off today and new. Major head. Nine control. Have a wonderful week. 